I was born 87 years ago. For 65 years, I've ruled as Tamriel's emperor. But this story is not about me. It is about him and how he killed everyone. Believe it or not, I have never actually played Oblivion. Well, that's not totally true. It must have been like 10 years ago now, but I just booted up the game, made a Khajiit that looked like Chester Cheeto, and then didn't actually play the game part. So if you count that as playing, then I'm an expert. While I may not have played Oblivion, I have committed genocide in both Skyrim and Fallout, both being other Bethesda games, so Oblivion shouldn't be too different. The big difference will be that all the stuff you guys know and love about the game will be brand new to me. I've gotta say, I'm kind of excited. We've got a lot of work to do, so I'm not gonna waste any more time introing, let's start killing every NPC in Oblivion. Okay, wow, I forgot how insanely ugly these characters are. So in Skyrim, I was Dump. This here will be Dumpathin, Dump's grandfather, or great-grandfather. I don't know, he's an ancestor of some kind. Murder just runs in the family. What's up with starting the Elder Scrolls games as some kind of prisoner? And why is this bag yapping at me like he's not in the exact same place? You're going to die. You hear me, Nord? Well, we're not in the same place for very long because I've got a date with the Emperor. What the hell are these third-person controls? Feels like I'm flying a plane, oh my god. I guess we'll just stick to first person, huh? This camera angle they got when talking to people is gonna take some getting used to. It's, it's so close to their face. Now, this first section here was a decent tutorial. Sure, they kinda just toss you into it, but that's a good thing sometimes. I don't always want my hand held, and when I do, I'll call your mom. She's a nice lady. Something I noticed that I don't like though is that weapons have durability. This is one of my least favorite weapon mechanics in video games. I had the same problem with Breath of the Wild, but it just makes me scared to use my weapons. A classic case of what the kids call gear fear. Regardless though, I do like the feel of the game. The movement, the speed, it reminds me of how Super Smash Bros. Melee is much faster than Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but it's ultimately like less polished, and, and then Ultimate has a generally slower pace, but the gameplay has been more specifically refined. I don't know. After a little while, you are faced with the choice of your birth sign. Most of them are a bit complicated, some have some drawbacks with them, but the one that really stood out to me was the most simple of them all, the steed. F yeah, I want to be 20 points faster. Right after this, the Emperor himself, Uriel Septum, gets carved up like an Easter ham, and I'm tasked with taking the Amulet of Kings to a guy named Joffrey. Before I can do that, I have to choose my class. I didn't know this was a thing in the game, and if I'm being totally honest, I, I don't know if it really matters, but I ended up choosing the Warrior class because I want to kill people. As soon as you've picked your sign, it's just a quick jog through the sewers, and wow. The world is so... Uh, it's, it's, it's old. The first thing I did was explore. I thought about going to Imperial City, but figured out how to wait on that. I laughed at this guy who couldn't catch a fish, got lost a little. I killed a highwayman and took his armor and reached Joffrey. Joffrey asked me to go somewhere with him and I learned that I can fast travel to places I haven't been yet. That makes my life much easier. Our first place in this long, long journey is Kavach. Hey look, a normal looking person. Oh, and the city is under attack from literal f***ing demons. But a normal looking person felt a little more pressing. I rolled up to the city and was immediately asked to help save it. I'm a nice guy, well, for now. So I entered my first Oblivion gate. At first, the Oblivion Realm thing was really cool. I'll talk about how my feelings about it evolved later, but at least at this point, I loved it. In this gate, there's two people that I need to make sure die. First, Illint, a Kavach guard, I think, who got in a bit over his head. And second, a soldier I was sent in to save, Menine Gonel. Turns out you can't actually kill him by conventional means, aka I can't stab him. So instead, to make sure he died, I used the console. Turns out he's actually essential, and when essential characters die in Oblivion, they just get knocked out, which is so much better than Skyrim. So my solution was to turn off Collision, push him out of the cage, make him not essential, and then old yeller him. 
We have officially killed about 0.003% of the people I need to kill for this video. We've got some serious work to do. With them dead, I wrapped up the Oblivion Gate by taking the Sigil Stone and was transported back to Kavach. It was a pretty neat adventure. I'm sure it won't get old. Right guys? Immediately following that, the remaining Kavach soldiers and I stormed the city and took back what was ours. Actually, it's not mine. I don't even know where the f*** we are. I heard about how you helped the guard drive the Daedra back. Well done. Jesus Christ, is that Sean Bean? In taking back Kavach, we lost some soldiers along the way. Bummer for them, I guess. Kavach saved, I went back to win in Priory with Boromir and- Oh my god, there's assassins here. And Martin is a beast! My lord, that guy shreds! We found Joffrey alive and well, and it turns out that he's part of the Blades. That's right, the guys you hear about in Skyrim, but instead of hearing about them, I'm living it. Man, I really should have played this game by now. Joffrey instructs me to bring Martin to Cloud Ruler Temple where the Blades all reside. When we were here, Joffrey asked if I wanted to be a Blade, but honestly, I felt like the story had been moving so fast up to this point that I'd better not commit myself to anything yet. You see, when doing these challenges, I usually do it in three phases. Prep, Slaughter, and Cleanup. The prep phase, the phase I'm currently in, is by far the most important phase. I need to take very careful measures to make sure that I don't lock myself out of encountering and inevitably being able to kill every NPC. This is I killed every NPC in Oblivion, not I killed most of the NPCs in Oblivion. For now, I just want to make my way through the main quest and not make any trouble for myself later. The next step in completing the main quest is to visit the Imperial City. Wait, you're not the Grand Champion, but since you're here, have you heard of Dumpy Kong? He's the best! Did you know you can join the Dumpy Kong Discord for free? Chat with Dumpy and other community members about your gaming interests, and keep this one just between us. If you'd like to support Dumpy further, consider becoming a member of the Dumpy Kong YouTube channel for $5 a month, where you'll get access to exclusive behind-the-scenes content related to each video Dumpy releases. Anyways, gotta run. Who the f***? This place is god ginormous. My current task here is to track down the Mythic Dawn Cult, the cult responsible for killing the Emperor, and I'm pretty sure they're the ones opening the Oblivion Gates. Don't quote me on that. Boris and I set up a meeting to trap them, and then I got murdered. A lot. Uh, they killed me so much, it was fucking absurd. But anyways, I have the power to just load back from a quick save, and they don't, so I eventually killed them, and they killed Boris. Ba Boris. I don't- I don't know. Rest in peace, Boris. <laughs> That wasn't in the script, I just thought that was funny. It wasn't even that funny. <laughs> it took me almost a half hour to get out of these stupid f***ing sewers, which I'm pretty sure is my fault, but I'm gonna blame the game for that one. Stupid game. What's not stupid is the cool message in the Mythic Dawn books. It took me a while to figure it out, but look, the first letter of each paragraph has a big letter, and they form a message that says, Subscribe to Dumpy- Oh wait, sorry, no, I read that wrong. It says, Green Emperor Way, where tower touches midday sun. Huh, what the f*** is that? Mean. Thankfully, there's someone much smarter than myself to help decipher it, and it turns out Green Emperor Way is a spot in Imperial City, and if you go there at noon, you'll find a map written on a gravestone that has the location of the Mythic Dawn's shrine drawn right on it. Yeah, I could've figured that out if I wanted, but I just wanted to give the NPCs a chance to catch up to my superior intellect. Yeah, anyways. I went to the shrine, barreled my way through, and killed Ruma Cameran, one of the figureheads in the Mythic Dawn's cult. Oh, and Julius. Poor Julius. It's okay, I got jump scared by the statue right after killing him. Oh! Jesus Christ, dude, that scared the f*** out of me. Felt like I deserved that. I was a little tired after beating on Julius, so I took a quick beauty nap and was jump scared again by Lucian Lachance. God, man, what is with a Dark Brotherhood and with people in their sleep? I'll come back to this guy later, but for now, he's on hood watch. My target dead and my heart sufficiently stunted, I cut the remaining Mythic Dawn members down like younglings and traveled back to Cloud Ruler Temple to report to Martin. I guess he's kind of the interim emperor now, so that's neat. I killed some spies around the temple and then Martin told me to go find a Daedric artifact. I found a book in the temple that mentions the Shrine of Azura, so that's where I headed next. Turns out for Azura to even talk to me, I need some glow dust. Just like ice all over again. Now, I'm a fucking idiot, and literally right here on this Willow Wisp, there is glow dust, but I did not know that. So I went on this stupid ass, long ass, ass ass adventure to find some stupid glow dust that was right in front of my stupid face the whole stupid time. 
I did find some in the Imperial City though, and brought it back to Azura so that she would be my friend. My new friend asked me to go to the gutted mine and kill some of her once followers so that they can be brought the peace of death. I like killing people, it's no secret by now, but these guys were rough. I was literally cowering in fear from these orcs, trying desperately to come up with a plan to beat them. The plan consisted mostly of shooting arrows and running like a tail tucked p but it worked. I killed Shrek and Fiona and my new friend gave me her star. Definitely not like high school. Now the next, very large mind you, section of the game is incredibly boring. Basically all you do is go through oblivion gate after oblivion gate after oblivion gate after yes I'm gonna do this for each oblivion gate because I need you to know how many there are. After oblivion gate after oblivion gate after oblivion gate after oblivion gate. I'm pretty sure I got them all. I do like the idea of the oblivion gates but I don't think that eight of them were necessary, and spoiler alert, there's another one later. But for now, with the gates taken care of, I have a new task to get Tiber Septum's armor. To get the armor, I gotta kill a bunch of ghosts and sh which, man, I hate these things. Might be my least favorite of the enemies. I killed all the ghost guys that you're not supposed to actually kill for good measure and then got the armor. Which, guess what? I don't even get to wear it! All that f***ing work just to give the armor to Martin, who, by the way, has only been f***ing reading for the last goddamn month, while I have literally been to hell and back several times. Sorry, Martin. I think you're a cool guy. You didn't deserve to be yelled at. The person who needs to be yelled at is the stupid asshole who keeps making fetch quests. My god, dude. I went and fetched the Welkin Stone like a good dog and brought it back to Martin too. Martin, can I have a treat? You f***ing d***. I, I'm sorry. I did it again. You look great in that armor, man. With all this bull gathered, we launched a full-scale invasion against the forces of Oblivion, and okay, yeah, I stood there and watched everyone fight. What? I need people to die! That's like, the whole point of this video. Joffrey ended up dying, which I didn't know was something that could actually happen, and shortly after, I entered the Oblivion gate myself to shut down some big evil machine. This part was cool. They gave me a time limit, which was just different enough to get my little brain the juice it needed to enjoy this. I summoned my inner Mario 64 speedrunner to get through this section as fast as possible, and I eventually reached the Great Sigil Stone, grabbed it, and shut down the Oblivionator. The game's over now, or so I hoped. Turns out that this just put a dent in Mankar Camarant's plans. Oh yeah, I didn't even talk about him yet. I guess he's the head of the Mythic Dawn or something, and he's the one trying to summon Mehrunes Dagon. Oh yeah, I didn't even talk about him yet. Dagon is the Daedric Prince of Destruction, and I guess Mankar wants to summon him so that Dagon can destroy the world or something goofy. To fully foil Mankar's plans, I need to travel to the land of Paradise, a Daedric plane created by Mankar himself. This place was a little trippy, a little quirky even. I fought a Daedra that I couldn't actually see because this game has awful fire effects, I watched some people sizzle in lava, battled some more Daedra, and pulled up to where the Camarans were hiding. Let me tell you guys something about myself real quick. I have this blind confidence that I can do literally anything. I'm not sure where it comes from, but I am always 100% positive that I can do anything at all, so I will often run into situations without properly preparing, and that's exactly what I did here. There's three Camarants here, and between the three of them, I was getting down. I was getting dunked on over and over. I was looking through my inventory, looking for some magical savior, but had no such luck. That was until I found the Sigil Stones. I had literally no idea, but it turns out the Sigil Stones allow you to enchant your weapons and or armor. So, I used the Great Sigil Stone to enchant my katana and called it my last hope. With my last hope, I was able to cut down the Camaran trio, vanquishing Mankar Camaran, and putting a stop to his plans, thus saving the world. Or, once again, so I hoped. My hopes were quickly dashed when Martin and I traveled to the Imperial City to find that it was under attack. Oblivion Gates had opened in the city and Mehrunes Dagon himself was there. I was talking mad on Martin a little bit ago, but honestly, that guy is alright. I tried fighting Dagon myself, but stood literally no chance. The only person that did was Martin. Martin, harnessing the power of the Amulet of Kings, transformed into a big f***ing dragon and was able to defeat Mehrunes Dagon, actually saving the world this time and sacrificing himself in the process. Process. Martin, you were alright. But for real this time, I've beaten the main quest and have been deemed the champion of Cyrodiil. Unfortunately, I'm still not even close to done yet. Beating the main quest is just the very first step towards killing every NPC. I still have many, many more quests to do, so let's not waste any time. The next major quest line I started was the Dark Brotherhood. I actually like the Skyrim Dark Brotherhood quests a lot, so I had pretty high hopes for the Oblivion version. I started off by killing Rufio, a task given to me by Lucian Lachance back when we first met. With Rufio dead, I had completed my first Dark Brotherhood contract and was now officially a member. As a member,
remember I was invited to the sanctuary where I met Gogron. Holy f do I love this guy. Oh, for example, this one time, I had a contract to kill a little Nord girl at her birthday party. <laughs> she asked me if I was the jester. So I said to her, no, I am a messenger of death. <laughs> you should have seen the look on her face. <laughs> anyway, she won't be seeing age six. <laughs> Okay, well, he's a little crazy. My next target is Gaston, a pirate captain who... Captain! Captain Tussaud, are you all right, sir? We... we heard a clamor, Captain. We're coming in. Oh my god, that scared the shit out of me. This moment, a moment that some people may not have thought was very significant, was a major shift for me the way I saw Oblivion. Up until now, I felt like Oblivion quests were, in a word, uninspired. But this moment showed me that maybe all the good stuff was hiding behind the cluttered main story. Again, it was small, but these sorts of moments are really important in making a game feel special. Another cool part in these quests specifically is that each contract has a bonus. For example, you'll receive the bonus for the next contract to kill a wood elf named Banelin, if you kill him by loosening the mounted head above him on his wall. The head will fall, kill Banelin, and will look like a complete accident. I did this successfully and received the bonus, a dagger called Sufferthorn. The next contract was even better, to go all the way back to where we started this game, the Imperial Prison, and visit a familiar face. That's right, that yapping asshole. I almost felt bad for how good I felt killing him. That makes sense. The next contract was a bit more complicated. You see, the problem with this contract is that I'm not actually supposed to kill anyone, but for this video, I need to kill two different people. One that I know disappears forever, and one that I'm not totally sure about. So, I want to kill both just to be safe. The long and short of it is that Motier, a familiar name from Skyrim, needs to fake his death. He gives you a poison to kill him, and an antidote to revive him later. The person who needs to see this fake death is Hides His Heart, an Argonian who Motier owes some money to. I struck Motier down with the poison, and then attacked Hides His Heart, because he doesn't come back later if I don't kill him now. I then just left Motier for dead and held on to the antidote. I failed the quest, but thankfully that doesn't actually mean too much because the quest line goes on regardless. The next quest was much less complicated. I pretty much just run and gun to this one. I killed the target and his lackeys and was on my merry way. This quest line just keeps on giving. The next quest is to kill a bunch of people in a whodunit sort of party, which is just f***ing gold. I had a lot of fun here, I'm not even gonna lie. I've been harping on this quest line for a bit too long, but it's just so good. The next contract is Adamus Philida, a fed of some kind who's trying to bring the Brotherhood down. I killed him and his bodyguard and then was given some pretty serious orders to go meet with Lucian Lachance himself. That asshole couldn't turn his security system off, but I reached him and he turned my whole world upside down. It turns out there's a rat in the Brotherhood somewhere and it's up to me, a brand new and not very tested member mind you, to kill everyone in the sanctuary. Genuinely could not have seen that coming. Well people, let's cross some names off the list, shall we? <laughs> R.I.P. D.B. Lucian Lachance is who I report to now, but instead of talking directly to him, I pick up my contracts through dead drops. I won't waste time much more with this questline, but I had a lot more contracts to go until I reached the next section. All this fighting, all this killing, just to find out that all of these people I murdered are actually members of the Dark Brotherhood, and someone was swapping out the dead drops. That is so incredibly funny, and such a good twist. I guess I can't feel that bad for killing assassins, am I right? Well, this narc problem in the Brotherhood has gotten pretty bad, and the higher-ups decided to take action. They thought the rat was Lucian, and they f***ed my man up. Like, I have to blur this, but trust me when I say they didn't show any sh** like this in Skyrim. This is... Wow. After, I went with remaining members of the Brotherhood and met the Night Mother. Certainly wasn't expecting to meet her. We're finally at the end of the quest line, and it turns out the traitor was some random guy named Matthew, and blah blah blah, everyone's dead, including the Night Mother. That was a f***ing mess. Well, what do you guys say we do the Thieves Guild quest line? I spent way too much time gushing about the Dark Brotherhood quests, so I'm gonna fly through this one. All in all, I'd say that the Thieves Guild was pretty mid in this game. They play up the character of the Grey Fox a lot, but then when you meet him, he just asks you to do a bunch of things for him, like he's not capable of taking care of his damn self. At least you get the boots of Spring Heel Jack, which, by the way, ended up getting glitched onto my character permanently, meaning even if I took it off, I still get the benefits of the boots while being allowed to wear other ones. Kinda neat, if I'm being honest. Now I jump like a big frog guy, so it was worth it, I guess. Then by 
by the end of the very quest line, it turns out he's just some f***ing guy who goes back to being his normal self and living his normal life, and now you are the Grey Fox. I don't know about this one. I wasn't exactly sure where to go from here. I did a couple side quests. One of the quests was really cool, actually. Like a most dangerous game situation. Not sure if you guys read that in school, but we did, and it was great. But basically, I was being hunted by some rich guys for sport and ended up killing them all. I did some other quests before settling on the Knights of the Nine quest line. The slave masters are a cunning breed. <laughs> I had no idea what to expect from this one. Like most other quests though, there's a lot of fetching to do. I got a helmet, I got some gauntlets, I got some boots, a shield, some other nonsense, all leading up to rebuilding the Sword of the Crusader. With that sword, I would face Umaril. <laughs> Who's Umaril, you ask? I don't really know. I wasn't really paying attention. Kinda lost me after grabbing all that stuff, I'm gonna be honest. With Umaril dead though, I saved the world, I think. Again, I zoned out on that one. That's, that's my bad. I killed all the night ghost guys though. And I got some cool armor, which I like a lot. I plan on rocking this armor for the rest of the video. The next quest line was the Fighter's Guild. There's no Fighter's Guild in Skyrim, so like the Knights of the Nine, I had no idea what to expect here. I was pleasantly surprised with this first quest where a lady was putting food outside another lady's house, which was drawing mountain lions into her basement. If that is not the most petty sh I have ever seen, I don't know what is. Also, this mother was just screaming at me the whole time. You think you've gotten rid of them all? You do? Well, you have it. There's one in my basement right now. Go get it. Chill out, dog. My God. Not like it's not it's mountain lions, I guess. It seems like the Fighters Guild is just a little bit of everything because my next task was to kill some robbers. We're kind of jumping all over the place, I know. I delivered some weapons. I killed a bunch of people who I can't exactly remember what for. It all kind of blends together after a while. I killed some guy with a cool name, Azani Blackheart. I killed some more people. Kidnapped a guy and beat the shit out of him before he killed himself. And then wiped out the entire Blackwood company. After all that insanity, I was promoted to Master of the Fighters Guild. It's pretty crazy how fast that stuff happens, huh? Fighter Guild, 10 out of 10. If you guys watched my I Killed Every NPC in Skyrim video, then you know that I'm not a fan of the College of Winterhold quest. In my notes, I wrote, Under Sarthal is such a dog sh quest, and apparently I didn't have fun looking for the lost books you need to find because I later wrote, This quest line sucks. I guess you could say I'm a glass half full kind of guy. And our next quest line is the Mages Guild, which is essentially the precursor to Skyrim's College of Winterhold. That being said, Oblivion's quests have been pretty hit or miss so far, so I'm hoping this one hits. And hit it did. It starts off a little slow. You have to get a recommendation from each Mages Guild leader to actually become a part of the guild, so that means you have to do some sort of quest for each of them. You gotta get a book, save some guy, save another guy, but in his dreams this time. I actually, I don't remember if that was part of the Mages Guild quest, it just happened and I really wanted to mention it because it was really cool. I got a staff, get an amulet, and then my favorite one, the Ring of Burden quest. One of the leader guys is a real asshole and basically sends you on an impossible quest. He wants you to grab a ring at the bottom of a well, right? But the ring is 150 pounds. So the last guy who tried to get it drowned, but he's not as smart as I am because instead of picking it up, I just levitated it all the way back to the guild and got my recommendation. I like stuff like that. It really makes you think a little bit. After you eventually get into the guild, you get to make your own staff, which is really cool. I made a staff of paralysis. Figured that would be pretty useful later on. I won't talk about this quest line for too much longer, but there's a surprising amount of killing that goes on. Like, a lot, actually. I don't think the Mages Guild tops the Dark Brotherhood or the Fighters Guild for me, but it's not bad. I enjoyed myself for the most part. And, like the College of Winterhold, I became the Archmage at the end. I can't even cast Fireball. I finished a lot of big quest lines, so I figured I'd knock some smaller stuff out next. I did the Sanguine quest and had to kill a bunch of NPCs in a cheater way because they don't come back later. Then I went to jail for making people naked. You know, just your average Wednesday. Then I did a quest that led me to finally have my mental break that I always have in these videos. The quest itself wasn't a big deal. Basically, you kill some skooma dealers and you're done. But for this video, I had to kill the guy that gives you the quest because he will disappear forever after this quest and, again, read the title. So I attacked and killed him. I try not to use the console unless it's absolutely necessary. But because I murdered this guy in cold blood, the Knights of the Nine relics deemed me as unworthy and I couldn't use them anymore. Here I stand, alone, in a shack filled with men, slayed by my hand, having rightfully been deemed unworthy. Fuck. I took some armor from a guard I killed, climbed into a dead man's bed, and took a nap. Where the hell? Unworthy! 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 Useless mortal meat! Walking bag of dung! Huh. 
okay, let's do this. The Shivering Isles dead ass took me longer to complete than the entirety of the prep phase thus far. It's like an entire other game. To really get anywhere though, you first have to deal with the Gatekeeper, a massive flesh machine made solely to kill. Instead of doing all the extra stuff like getting special arrows to do more damage to him, I just summoned my inner Levi Ackerman and diced him up. Then I went and laughed at his grieving mother. <laughs> the NPC interactions in this game are just f***ing phenomenal. It's, it's so good sometimes. I met Shea Gorath. He then sent me on one of the best quests in any Elder Scrolls game ever. I lovingly refer to this quest as the DND DM quest. You take the role of fate decider person and can either kill these poor adventurers or drive them to madness. Name of the video, blah, blah, blah. But it was a really funny quest and I liked it a lot. Immediately following this quest, I got attacked by Knights of the Order. For a second, I thought they were glitched and their armor wasn't rendering or something, but nope, they just look like that. Like I said before, there is a lot to do, so I won't bog you down with everything. I did the House of Dementia quests, and then the House of Madness quests. I did become the Duke of Mania, though, in case you were wondering. And as soon as I did, everything started falling apart. Sill became an op, the Grey March started in full force. I'm not even gonna begin to explain the Grey March. I rebuilt the Gatekeeper to be really strong, gonna regret that later, and found out that Shea Goreth and Jigalag were the same person all along. Who's Jigalag? Uh, Shea Gorath, I, I guess. I killed some more people, fought a shadow clone of myself who dropped a really cool sword called the Shadow Rend. Such a sick weapon. Killed some more people, and then went up against Jigalag himself. I know I've done a f***ing awful job of explaining this entire storyline, but Jigalag is basically the god of order. The opposite of Shea Gorath, who is the god of madness, I think, something, something like that. And it turns out they're the same guy, and I don't know, man. Uh, this story hurts my head. I did manage to defeat Jigalag, thus also defeating Shea Gorath, and then I became Shea Gorath. No, I am not kidding. Well, I'm God now. Goodbye, everybody. Where, where am I? If I beat off now, is it a threesome? With that fever dream over, I am quickly approaching the second phase of this whole operation. I just have a couple small things to do first. I cleared Battlehorn Castle, I killed a skeleton pirate, I killed a bunch of people who f with my friend Mazoga, then I killed Mazoga, I killed a handful of other people before starting the last quest line I need to do before the slaughter phase, the Imperial City Arena. This quest is very straightforward. Talk- You what? You want to be a combatant? <laughs> Wait, you're serious, aren't you? Kill. I'm just...
out next. <laughs> now that's the spirit. This goes on for a pretty long time, and I think if I had started this quest earlier on in the game, then it would have been a bit more rewarding, but I blew through most of the fights with almost no effort. I did have to kill Porkchop, which was really sad. Then, eventually, after enough fights, you can challenge the reigning champion, the Grey Prince. First, though, you get to pick your nickname, and look at this. The Tamriel Terror. Sound familiar? After soon, there's nothing standing between the Hall of Valor and Dump. The Terror of Tamriel. I guess it really does run in the family. They talked the champion up so much throughout this quest line that I thought he was gonna be really, really hard, but he was easier than some of the other fights I had leading up to his. Felt a little bad, honestly. But, uh, hey, I'm champ now. As champ, I have a fan. A loving fan. A worshipping fan. A passionate fan. Ah, uh, a... Ah, I wish there was a word for it. When I asked you guys in a YouTube community post who your favorite Oblivion NPCs were, the NPC that came up the most was the Adoring Fan. I'd never heard of him before playing the game myself, but I could just tell from meeting him that he was golden. But instead of showing him the wonders of the world and being a great, shining example of glory and honor, I figured I'd torture him by dragging him around everywhere with me and making him watch me commit genocide, thus tainting his image of me before slaying him by my own hand. So that should be fun. Speaking of slaying, I think this is it. I'm gonna start phase two. Please, sit back, relax, grab a bowl of something yummy. This is the slaughter phase.
You may have noticed that I didn't show any kills in the Imperial City yet, and that's because I wanted to talk about the game a little more and figured I could show the Imperial City Massacre in the background while I do. Now, like I said earlier, I hadn't really played Oblivion up until now, and I see now that I was really missing out. Oblivion was a fantastic game. Sure, there were a lot of quests that felt the same. Sure, the DLC wasn't always fantastic. Sure, the combat is a little lackluster, but that's all sort of expected when making a game of this scale, especially back in 2006. There are a lot of great character interactions and scripted moments, and something about Oblivion feels like there was a little more love poured into it than the other Bethesda games I've played. Like, it doesn't take itself quite as seriously, and that makes it a little easier to enjoy for me. Lastly, I of course have to comment on the NPCs. I've killed a lot of NPCs in my day, and Oblivion was less sad than the others, and more entertaining. The NPCs were fun to interact with, even if I was murdering them. Lucian Lachance, the Grey Fox, even though he's just an Omega, the Grey Prince, Relmina Veranim, the Gatekeeper, and of course, the adoring fan. By Azura, by Azura, by Azura, it's the grand champion. I can't believe it's you standing here next to me. Yeah! Rest in peace, my man. Thank you guys for watching. I'm glad I finally played Oblivion. I get why you guys wanted to see this game so bad. Let me know if there's any other games you'd like to watch me destroy, and I'll see you guys next time. GG's, hey. everybody.